We have eminent experts here at the 49th Union World Conference on Lung Health, and the focus will be on a very different region. We less hear about tuberculosis, and the context of Middle East is very unique. We have Dr. Nevin Wilson. He has a very well-known figure in the fight against tuberculosis in uh, India as well as in Middle East countries. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bobby, and uh, uh, welcome to, to all of you who are watching this show. I'm very pleased to, to, to be able to share this opportunity with you. We have with us here uh, Dr. Hoda Atta, who is from WHO MRO. She coordinates uh, the, uh, the response from WHO Regional Office in Cairo for tuberculosis as well as other communicable diseases. We also have with us program managers from Lebanon, uh, from Jordan, and from Iraq, we and we have colleagues from WHO Syria, Syria and from, and from IOM uh, in Yemen, as well as, as, well as Dr. Jeremy, Jeremy Fowler uh, from the Anur Sanatorium. They will they be will share with you their experience managing, managing tuberculosis control uh, through, uh, through the Middle East response. I'm handing over the mic to Dr. Hoda. <laughs> Thank you and uh, good morning. Um, as you know, the Middle East, the, the, the region, the WHO Eastern Mediterranean region has uh, long experience in managing TB and recently affected by the crisis in several countries. Uh, two thirds of the re of the countries in our region is affected directly or indirectly by the by the crisis. I named I mentioned uh, Iraq, Yemen, Lebanon, Syria. Uh, and I, and I also would like to refer to the important partnership to ensure continuity of the TB care uh, in, in such a situation. The partnership actually started with uh, glo under global fund support with IOM to reach the population, to reach the services of TB and ensure its continuity to the IDP population, to the migrant, to refugees. We have a lot of successful examples. In spite of the challenges and the several innovations have been introduced to introduce the care, uh, country, the countries here will share their experience on reaching the unreachable population. Thank you, Dr. Um, uh, the NTP manager of Lebanon. Actually, I get this post immediately with the starting of crisis in the neighboring country, Syria, with the influx of displaced population. Uh, and we faced uh, difficulties in reaching people on a movement. So we uh, actually succeed to reach them through collaboration with the International Organization for Migration, the UNHCR, and uh, uh, under a generous grant from the Global Fund. So we succeed to do active case finding in them, to reach cases, to uh, prevent interruption of treatment, and to lead them to the uh, finishing of treatment, uh, successful finishing of treatment. And we, we do collaboration inter uh, countries between NTP, NTPs in all uh, surrounding countries of Syria. Uh, and in a referral form between countries to uh, prevent interruption of treatment. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Dr. Jeremy Fowler, and I'm the medical director at Anur Sanatorium for Chest Diseases. Um, we are a TB sanatorium that was founded in 1965 uh, to treat TB among the Bedouin, and we're a regional referral center for multidrug resistant TB. And uh, we're very fortunate and very privileged to work in Jordan. Uh, to work with the Jordanian National TB Program, uh, the Ministry of Health in Jordan, uh, in care of these patients, and uh, uh, our partnership with the IOM uh, has really helped us to address the minimum refugee uh, populations. And um, so, yeah, it's just a great privilege to be here. We play a really small role in the patient facility. Uh, that, that takes the uh, complicated cases of people who need inpatient yeah. care um, and able to just uh, work together with our partners in the region. And, and thank you, Gordon, for being a hospitable, open country that really allows us to, to, to work alongside our partners. I am Dr. Ibrahim Bedouin from Jordan, NTB manager. Uh, 
TV program is established in 1973. Uh, the goal of the national TV program, uh, Jordan is the uh, lowest incidence of TB globally. The main goal of NTB is to eliminate TB in Jordan by the end of 2025 through two objectives. To achieve one TB case per 100,000 population, now is 6.3 in 2017, and to lowering the death from TB to less than two deaths per year. Uh, now uh, in 2017, 16 cases. Uh, as you know, Jordan, uh, about the population 10 million, uh, third of the population is uh, refugees, is non-Jordanian, third of the population, about 3 million non-Jordanian. And uh, the second thing, uh, Jordan is the poor country uh, and is, uh, no, is a stable uh, country. And for this, we have some challenges with uh, some uh, refugees, 80% uh, of Syrian, 80% of Syrian, about 1,300,000, uh, 80% uh, like uh, our life with the community, uh, not in uh, camps. Uh, and for this condition, uh, maybe change uh, the residence, change the location. The other ch challenges, there is some insecurity uh, uh, between Jordan and another country because of uh, security. Uh, and another thing, uh, we, uh, may, yani we should uh, improve human resources and we need help from a global fund, from IOM, from WHO for this uh, reason. And thank you. Hello, and this is Nevin again. What, what you just heard is a very, very unique uh, situation. You have a country which actually has an incidence of TB less than five, probably one of the lowest in the world. And currently they are actually overwhelmed by a, an external population that has in increased its incidence to about 6.3. And they want, to, they want to aim for elimination. And, and I believe that we as partners really need to gather around Jordan to help Jordan become the first country globally to eliminate tuberculosis. And I think that that's Dr. Ibrahim's vision and the goal of the Ministry of Health of Jordan. Let me hand over to Dr. Samer from Iraq. Yes. Thank you. Uh, really, Iraq is the uh, highest country of, for TB incidents in the MRO. Uh, it was in the program built in 1940, and we uh, have uh, many hospitals previously, and uh, about uh, 1994, we start our program uh, because the, again, uh, emerging disease, the TB, uh, emerge again. And uh, starting with the 165 patients per 100,000 per year. Uh, then uh, decline uh, occur, but unfortunately, because of the repeated war, Gulf War, first and second, sanction and other, uh, return, we return to the highest incidence. Uh, nowadays, uh, according to the WHO Global Report uh, 2017, uh, we have a, a prevalence of uh, 55 patients per uh, 100,000 population. Uh, really, uh, we have 20% uh, of uh, this patient are MDR, and uh, unfortunately, we have uh, a new XDR patients. That's uh, need an urgent action from our program and the supporting organization like WHO and IOM, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, the fund which is utilized for our program is so poor because of the 
military operations and the conflict and the political and secure political situation lead to uh, the fund goes to this uh, issue and uh, making the TB in the last priority for uh, funding. So uh, we need the support of the organizations, uh, especially uh, from uh, global uh, fund uh, through their emergency or through mere uh, Middle East response uh, to continue our uh, work, uh, excellent work that's uh, evaluated from the uh, global fund for uh, 2016 and uh, 2017 we achieved 100 uh, percent uh, of the goal so we need to continue uh, in that way uh, to uh, satisfy our people that we can do it we can catch the tb patient and treat it successfully thank you very much uh, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Humam al Banna from WHO Syria. I'm here on behalf of my colleague, the NTB manager in Syria who wasn't able to be here. Well, the humanitarian crisis in Syria in the humanitarian crisis in Syria entered its eighth years uh, of conflict. Uh, with uh, with this eight years, uh, there were uh, very bad consequences on all uh, all sectors, and especially the health sector. More than 50% of the health infrastructure were damaged or destroyed, uh, and uh, Syria used to have a very good uh, and strong TB control program before the crisis, with services uh, distributed in all 14 governments on Syria, uh, but before because of the and it has also uh, the success rate uh, for for treatment more than 90 percent in 2006, and the notification rate was more than 70 uh, percent. But because of this crisis, uh, the program faced very challenging uh, circumstances, uh, and he were he were able to maintain services during these seven years of crisis. Uh, through the partnership with the international organization, uh, with, the, with the civil society, with the, the global fund support, with the uh, WHO support, and uh, basically the health workers that work in the program was the main uh, factor that made this program implement during this crisis. Thank you. Good morning. This is Bissurai. Uh, I work for IOM in Middle East Restaurant Project in Yemen. Uh, talking about TB, um, Yemen has uh, 48 um, uh, per 100,000 um, this uh, um, um, uh, incidence rate. Uh, but as previous speaker said, in Yemen, also, Yemen is also facing a serious crisis, humanitarian crisis, and more than 22 uh, million people are in need of humanitarian need and health infrastructure infrastructure are also affected by the uh, crisis and um, most of the uh, health facilities nearly 50 percent uh, have been affected and only um, uh, functional um, but for, through the middle east response we are supporting national tv program to implement the essential tv services uh, in Yemen and we are uh, using the different approaches. For example, we are um, also paying the uh, critical Yemen resources and the critical functions in Yemen because uh, in Yemen from last two years, the uh, salary uh, has not been paid uh, to the staff. So to uh, um, improve the motivation and to continue the uh, services, we need to pay the um, uh, salary and also um, other different approaches have been used for example um, the transportation for um, uh, this culture and dst services also started because the service is not in all areas so it is only in the uh, sana capital city sana so specimen from other areas um, have been transported um, so uh, through the Middle East response, uh, we are supporting uh, critical services to the national TV program and the uh, the 
coordination and collaboration among the other partners is very critical. Uh, uh, like WHO, other partner organization, is very essential to collaborate collaborate among the partners. And also, the approach should be um, modified and adapted as per the context. Uh, so in that way, um, we are able to continue to provide the services in Yemen uh, through the national TV program. Thank you. I am Dr. Nidal Ode from IOM Iraq team. Uh, really, this uh, big partnership among big number of uh, organizations uh, uh, feel let me feel happy seeing that all hands as the slogan in the last years and uh, looking that all levels of uh, partners are coming in this uh, conference meeting discussing in details issues that can push the policy makers push the uh, organization i ask dr hoda for some concluding remarks uh, I think what we all observe this morning, hearing our colleagues from these five very challenging contexts, is that tuberculosis control is possible even in the most extraordinary uh, emergency situations. Syria and Yemen and Iraq uh, are examples of contexts where most things are not possible. But our colleagues from, from these countries have actually demonstrated to us what they can do and what they have done to save lives and, and to protect people from tuberculosis. The Middle East response is going into a second phase that begins in January 2019 and goes up to December 2021. That's three more years. But the funding that's available is not enough. Uh, it is nowhere near enough to even provide the essential support that these programs need to provide basic services to the people that they serve. And we need your help and we need your advocacy to make sure that the Global Fund will allocate more funding to the Middle East response to save lives in this region. Thank Over you. Thank you all countries in crisis. And in spite of this, they were able to uh, deliver services to the people affected by tuberculosis. Those are chronic patients that we have to treat them. We have to treat them to prevent the spread of disease to others and also to ensure that they are getting the care that they deserve to get. Uh, I remind all the group of our commitment in WHO by the Director General, universal health coverage, reaching all vulnerable population, leaving no one behind. This is a collective responsibility for all of us in the health community. And I also join uh, my colleague Nevin in calling for the global community to allocate more funds for tuberculosis because we have ambitious declaration under the ONGA by the high in the ONGA high level meeting uh, to treat 40 million population and our region will contribute to that goal and the countries presented today proved that in spite of the challenges they can they can deliver the services they can come up, come up with innovative responses innovative interventions to reach the people so we shall continue to join our effort to mobilize more resources to implement the MER2 grant with all the countries here and with the Ministry of Health people, with the partner, with the community, with NGOs, with the private sector. So with this, I can say that with joining effort, we will reach our goal. Thank you so much. I cannot say we are competing with other disease. We are advocating for an integrated comprehensive approach to deliver care to people from any disease they have, including tuberculosis, uh, tuber uh, uh, diabetes, uh, other chronic infections, other communicable disease, whatever they have. And with the integrated approach, we will ensure delivery to, of care to the patient from whatever disease he has. So we are not competing with other. In, in reality, we are joining effort with other diseases, with the chronic infection, because they are directly or indirectly related to the problem of tuberculosis as well. So we are calling for multi-sectoral action, integrated action to, to reach out. Just to add to what, what Dr. Hoda said, in terms of burden, 
the, the communities in Iraq or in Yemen or in Syria, they face the same challenges in terms of non-communicable disease as communicable disease. The issues uh, is, really a, is really the context. For instance, I was in Sana'a about a month ago and the minister was telling me his major problem was that he couldn't get insulin into the country. It's a procurement and supply chain issue. And that means that the diabetic people in, in Yemen, especially in the northern part, were struggling to maintain their their uh, their injections. So these are these are common problems. It's not that tuberculosis is going to compete with diabetes. The challenges are similar, but the context makes the challenge very difficult to to address. And and that's why we need multiple stakeholders. We need multiple partnerships, and we need advocacy at the global level to 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 address this issue. Yes, uh, regarding to the TB and diabetes. We have a good experience uh, for that, and we have a good collaboration between TV program and diabetes program in Iraq, and we're making a, a two survey, national one and a regional one, and we find that 6% of the TV patients was uh, diabetic, and the same uh, uh, figure uh, as uh, regional. So we adopt uh, by, uh, with collaboration, uh, 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 um, with WHO and IOM to adopt a TB diabetes guideline. So our doctors and physicians and specialized uh, TB or internal medicine physician, how to deal with the TB patient when he have diabetes and vice versa. Thank you. And I just want to add too, I think TB is one of these diseases that if we work together globally to eliminate TB, to I mean, we can actually remove this disease from the list of um, diseases that we have to handle eventually. Um, but as, especially when we get down to the the, uh, the lower numbers, it takes a great deal of effort to do that. But that's, you know, we have an opportunity to do that if we work together. Mm -hmm.